first time watching and welcome if this is your second third or fourth time welcome back so in today's video i'm going to do a little something different i'm going to give you guys 10 factors or 10 ways to be a great infant teacher if you don't know i'm an infant teacher and i've been an infant teacher for almost three years now and i have learned so much and honestly i feel like there's no way of telling about how to be a great infant teacher unless you actually experience it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like the love and care for that infant teachers gives just comes naturally and deep, honestly deep within. So these are just my 10 ways that I feel like what makes a great infant teacher. The first way I feel like, one way I feel like what makes a great infant teacher, you have to be caring. You have to be very caring and nurturing spirit. You have to be able to care and nurture young children in a way where they trust you and they look to you for guidance and assistance. And they know that when mommy and daddy leave that you are going to be their caregiver and someone who will protect them and cater to their needs. So I feel like nurturing and caring is definitely number one on my list. The second factor or way I feel like making a great infant teacher is you have to have patience. Patience definitely needs to come along with the job because you have to have patience, you know. Um, you have to be able to multitask. And I say, the reason why I say patience because if you don't have patience, being an infant teacher might not honestly be for you. Because you might have days when you have a room full of crying babies and then one day you might have a room where it's peaceful, everybody is zen and calm and, you know, everybody is... Okay, well, then you have those days where, you know, somebody might be off their schedule. Somebody might um, be sick. Somebody might be just not feeling good or have stranger danger. So all those things, you have to have patience because, especially if you have a new child that comes in who is only being nursed at home and not using a bottle and they're trying to adjust to bottles. You have children who come a lot first time at daycares, who come in older, a little older, and have stranger danger. So you definitely have to have patience and work with parents and have patience with the child. And the third one I would say is multitask because you have to be able to do multiple things at once. Change diapers, feed bottles, rock to sleep, read story time, change um, clothes, feedings, all that good stuff plays a part in being an infant teacher. And you have to be able to multitask. Multitask come in as something that you'll learn, but as you get the hang of it. But if you want to be an infant teacher, I would say you definitely have to multitask. The fourth thing I would have to say is communicate effectively with parents. That is one of the top things on the list because you have to be able to communicate with parents if you're caring for their pride and joy throughout the day, eight hours a day, five days a week. And, you know, parents want to get an update, especially if they're a first-time mom or first-time dad. They want to get updated. They want pictures. They want um, just they want milestone updates. They want growth spurts. They want um, simple as a child rolling over. They want a child who's sitting up, crawling, scooting, waving. You know, saying mama, dada, all those important milestones. And it's also important to communicate with parents to understand what they're doing at home. Maybe you can incorporate that in school. Or maybe a lot of times parents have questions as well what works at school because it's not working at home. So I feel like communicate with parents is definitely important for anything. The fifth thing I would have to say is bonding. You will have to bond with the child and get to know each child their likes, dislikes, their needs, their wants, because every child is different. And I noticed that we're working in infant room and in a daycare, I realized that every child has a different personality and you have a certain bond with each child individually. And that you know that this child loves this, this child loves this, this child loves story time, this child loves music, you know, when this child is feeling sad. So bonding is very important when it comes to being an infant teacher because, you know, you have to get that bond in order for that child to trust you. When they trust you and they feel comfortable around you, they're going to adapt to being around you. And they're going to want nobody but you outside of their parents at the end of the day. I think I'm on number six. The sixth thing I would have to say is incident reports. Always write incident reports. Incident reports are so important because if... A child falls, hurt their self, a boo-boo, the parents need to know. You have to cover yourself at the end of the day. So incident reports are very important. They're very crucial. They're very um, much so needed. If a child has a scratch, a bruise, a bloody nose, a busted lip, um, 
something all that needs to be written down in a system report because the parents need to feel they can trust you and you trust them trust you in the ability to send them if their child has been hurt or harmed in any way if their child isn't you know incident reports are very important i would still have to say number seven is hmm what would i say number seven is number seven is i would have to say Oh, got it. Y'all have a bubbly personality. Y'all have to have a very bubbly personality. You have to be very animated. Babies love animation. They love um, extra and getting in character. And, you know, that you could take something small and make it big because they love that. They love when you sing ABCs, one, two, threes, happy, you know, clap your hands, boop, boop. They love if you're reading a story. They love dramatics. Like I know in my class now, a quite a few movies, I'm not going to like, uh, and they crack up. They love that. And it's so funny to them. And I think they just love it because it's, they know that something is coming. And they know if I repeatedly do it, they know that it's coming. They actually wait for it and for it to happen. So it's a little stuff like that. Like just pay attention to that and all the good stuff like that. I would say number eight. I would have to say number eight would be hmm, creativity. You have to be very creative working with infants. There's so many... Um, Things you can do with babies, a lot of people don't know. There's so many sensory projects. There's so many um, baby sign language exercises you have. We do baby yoga. Um, baby yoga is one of the fun things we do. Sign language, story time, sensory music. My class love music. They love singing songs. They love shaking and hitting drums and shaking maracas and musical instruments and shakers and all that good stuff like that. They love anything that they're not supposed to have paper, pens, markers, all that good stuff like that. So another thing I would have to say, you have to be very alert. Alert is very important. Actually, this should have been on the top of my list. Alert is very important because babies, they grab, to gravitate to a lot of things they're not supposed to have when it comes to small objects, when it comes to outlets and plugs. You gotta make sure your classroom is baby proof and it's um, efficient and it's safe. Cause babies, their attention, they, see, they catch stuff on the floor before you see it. You know, and just like choker has it, that's very important. Another thing I would say is allergies. Allergies is very important because if you don't know what a child is allergic to, you don't want to introduce them to something they haven't ate at home, or you don't want to bring anything into the classroom that's your lunch that you eat and they become get allergic reaction to. So that's very important knowing with your kids' allergies and stuff like that because you gotta be aware you have to have EpiPens on deck and all that good stuff. You have to be able to know when you know, a certain ingredient is not welcome in your classroom due to an allergy and stuff like that. Another factor, I would say, another way to make a great infant teacher is, hmm, um, I will have to say is um, organization, very, very organized, and, but, and routines are important. Routines are very important when it comes to working with infants and babies because they adapt to changes, not not too quickly, but if you keep stuff in a routine and keep things going, then they'll know that this is happening. For instance, in my classroom, typically doing drop off, you know, I talk, typically take their pictures, the sense of parents, and I'll give breakfast and all that good stuff like that. And morning diapers, we do morning circle time every morning. We do um story time. We might do a little art project here and there, but um, routine is very important. Um, ch babies um, adapt. Sometimes they don't adapt good to change, and if it's changed, it doesn't mean a drastic change. It need to be changes that happen over time. So that's also important as well. And honestly, just have fun if you if you're an infant. You just have fun. The biggest thing is having fun, nursery care for these little babies, and making sure they trust you and the parents trust you and communicating effectively with parents at the end of the day. Because if you don't have that family um, partnership and you don't have that bond with that child, then it's going to be a rough patch. It's going to be hard to adjust to having that baby or that parent in your class. So I think that I learned over the years that effective communication is a or 10 okay and also what, what things you wear to work like if you change your hairstyle up a bit if you um be alarmed about that because a lot of these babies some babies have stranger danger they see you with a different hairstyle they're like who is that they're like oh don't touch me okay so that's important as well so honestly i would say if you want to be an infant teacher honestly it, it just comes naturally it comes with time and honestly, if you love working with young children, you're their fun, energetic soul who loves to have a good time, teach, nurture, care, provide, 
all that good stuff, I will say as a teacher is perfect for you. I can say this for one of the jobs I've had and I have been so happy. I felt like this is where I needed to be. You know, I love being an infant teacher. I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, I love it. I love, I love my babies. I love watching them grow, develop, reach different milestones. I love just watching them every day and being a part of their lives because it makes me think that, wow, I did something to shape this child because, you know, babies starting to get shaped and molded when they're at that three-month stage and up. And honestly, when they come out the womb. So I think it's very important. I think I feel like I'm an important part of their life because I'm in the beginning process. I'm in the beginning um, step and all the good stuff like that. So I said, if you want to be an infant teacher, it's super duper fun. I love it. And yeah, I can, if I can give advice 24 seven of how to be a great infant teacher. So if you want to get any more infant videos, let me know down below. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I can give you the best advice I think is possible. And I really honestly hope you guys enjoyed this video. I thought that I could bring some knowledge to me about working with the infants to YouTube because it is something that I am passionate and truly love doing. So I said my YouTube channel is all be all about showing my passion through YouTube, my different crafts, and just being able to make somebody laugh, happy, give advice, and just be confident and comfortable in who you are because YouTube is all about focusing on you and it's also mainly about making the audience happy and that's how you obtain viewers and you obtain subscribers and I just, I'm just so excited for this channel to grow and I'm and I can just so excited to see it just grow and I just help so many people across the world so I really honestly hope you guys enjoy this video and I have a description down below of the 10 factors plus some um, that I mentioned in this video just in case you want it's like a quick outline that'll be down below but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video bye guys mm -hmm.